I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. <coughs> my Lords, the Advanced British Standard will bring together the best of A levels and T levels, remove the artificial choice of academic and technical pathways, and will raise the attainment floor for all students. S students will receive more high quality teaching time. They will continue to build maths and English capability and develop a wider knowledge base which will enhance their career opportunities. This is a long-term reform which needs careful development and consultation moving forward. My Lords, at the Conservative Party conference, the Prime Minister had the opportunity to announce real change for our schools. He could have spoken about fixing funding schools, about recruiting and retaining teachers currently leaving en masse, about sorting out the widening attainment gaps, the soaring absence levels and missing mental health support. Nothing we heard will tackle these issues affecting pupils now or provide the staff we need to teach now, let alone in a decade's time. Um, could the noble lady, the minister, tell us what the government is doing this financial year to provide the buildings, teaching, and support this generation of children so desperately need? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really can't accept uh, the noble lady's assertions. So, um, the government is doing a great deal in relation uh, to teacher recruitment, and these <coughs> programmes will, uh, starting from. Uh, now will also address the attainment gap. So, in relation to teacher recruitment, we will be paying up to £6,000 a year tax free to teachers in the first five years of their career teaching key STEM and technical shortage subjects and those working in disadvantaged schools, so, addressing recruitment and attainment. And critically, we will be spending £150 million each year to support those who do not pass their maths and GCSE at 16 to gain these qualifications by the time they get to 19. My Lord, since this is the advanced British. Well, not necessarily. Since this, is the advanced, since this is the advanced British standard, could the Minister confirm that it will be available for schools in Scotland? as is the A-level exam at the moment, and what discussions have there been with the Scottish Government? Um, well, uh, as I said in my opening answer, there will need to be extensive um, consultation, but obviously we hope to work closely with the Scottish Parliament on this. Uh, my Lords, A-levels and T-levels should never be the only options for 16-year-olds. There are many highly talented, creative and practical students with work-based <coughs> skills which are essential for the economy. So can the Minister please reassure us that BTEC vocational qualifications will continue to be available to ensure that these students get their work accredited? <laughs> so I am afraid I can't uh, reassure the noble uh, lady of that. She will be aware that we have carried out extensive reform um, of our qualifications, and she will know that in, as of eight, August 2022, we'd removed 5,500 qualifications with low or no uh, enrolments, but we still have the most complicated and duplicative landscape of qualifications in this area of at least 7,000 available qualifications, and we will be addressing that through our reform programme. My Lords, my Lords, I my interest as ever as a secondary school teacher. Um, the Noble Minister said the ABS will develop maths and English capability. Um, for anybody who's just guided their son through, well, badly, through maths, GCSE and maths A-level, are we saying that maths, GCSE is not good enough? What, and that surely that's enough maths for anybody? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, I think it isn't enough maths for anyone. As the House knows, we are an outlier in the G7 in not uh, requiring uh, maths to 18. Um, and we've made tremendous programme uh, with our maths hub and our teaching uh, for mastery program, pro, pro approach. Uh, and we can see that also in Ofsted's recent um, report on school maths, which described it as a resounding positive shift in mathematics education has taken place in primary schools. 
but we are determined to invest more in maths and give every child the opportunity to succeed in maths. My lords, my lords, I, I wonder if the noble lady... My lords, uh, I very much welcome the government's uh, interest in broadening the curriculum at age 18. Uh, will, has she had indications from universities that they are willing to broaden their <coughs> admittance criteria too, uh, so that uh, students who follow a varied programme uh, across the subjects do not get disadvantaged in relation to those who have followed a much narrower curriculum? And will she also ensure that where children have to learn maths or English to 18, which they might naturally not wish to do, it is maths and English which they will find a use for in their lives, not maths and English which is directed towards getting into university. So the way we're thinking uh, about this programme, and I would stress again that we need to consult extensively on the detail of it, is that it will equip, it will offer children much more breadth, it will offer them much more time, a third more uh, teaching time, which means that we can keep the, we've suggested around 90% of the contents of a current A-level for those going down an academic route and following the occupational standards for those going down a technical or vocational route. But the aim of the programme is that it will give children much greater choice uh, and so they will be able to access still the same three-year degrees if university is their uh, preferred option, but also will be well equipped for further technical education or the workplace. My lords, my lords, my lords. The noble lady in her initial answer to my noble friend on the front bench referred to the necessity for extensive uh, consultation uh, before these new qualifications can be properly embedded. Um, she will, I'm sure, agree that the burden of changing these arrangements for uh, post-16 education will fall hugely on schools and particularly on school leaders. Can she tell the House how those people are going to be consulted, how extensively, and uh, without wishing to be disrespectful, how much notice will be taken of what they say? <laughs> well, I I'm slightly surprised at the noble lady's last remark because clearly, you know, this programme can't work uh, without the buy-in and understanding and support of school leadership. So it would be a short-sighted government that didn't uh, pay attention uh, to their um, uh, reflections on this. But I'm also slightly surprised because this is this approach is something that was in. The previous Labour, in the Labour Manifesto of 2010, was in the Times Education Commission, so I'm surprised at the noble lady's hesitancy now. Uh, and I'm reminding the House of my declared interests. Those with special educational needs, particularly dyslexia and dyscalculia, are clearly going to be put under a lot more pressure by this approach. When will the government publish? a plan that means that we have a process of making sure these people are not excluded from reaching a level standard or put under extra pressure. When can we expect to see it? When can we to relate it to the rest of the curriculum? Or are we going to change the law that means that people are allowed to, you're allowed to exclude uh, people and discriminate against them? Oh, you clearly aren't going to um, uh, do the latter. Um, so it's incredibly important that we design this in a way that we have the right offer for children with special educational uh, needs and disabilities or children who've uh, been in local authority care or who come from particularly disadvantaged homes and that's a clear commitment from this government. I wonder if the noble lady, the minister, can help me. Um, my wife is Polish and she read in the newspapers recently that um, Polish was being offered at secondary school level alongside Latin uh, as a second language. Um, and she was very surprised because she thought that uh, certainly in her education, and she was taught Latin as well as Polish, obviously, and she said that Polish is more difficult to learn than, than, than Latin is. Um, and also just about as useful, uh, which surprised me. So could the noble lady advise me on how I should respond. 
Well, I think maybe it would make sense to go and talk to the school in question and understand their decision to offer Polish. <laughs>